I'm making today's video for you, but I'm also making it for future someday me. Hey Cass, I know you're feeling low right now and you want to stay in your pajamas all day and curl up and just watch Bridgerton and eat snacks, but that will not make you feel any better. Here are things that are actually going to make you feel better. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Cass from Clutterbug. I make videos here on YouTube about cleaning and decluttering and just making your home better because I know it's not even about what it looks like. It's about how it affects your health and your happiness. I want you to take a look around at your home right now, like look around your house. How do you think the way it looks and feels is affecting your life? Does it look like a home that's happy and healthy or does it look like a home that's sad and maybe not at its best? It matters. It matters because your environment affects you. When your space is clean and tidy and put together, you're going to feel relaxed, less stressed, and you're going to be happier too. And when your space looks cluttered and messy and dark and chaotic, you're going to feel sad and stressed and depressed. It's really easy to get stuck in this vicious cycle of feeling sad and overwhelmed and just low because when we do feel the, that way, we don't feel like cleaning. We don't feel like decluttering or making our space better. So our space gets really messy and really cluttered, which makes us feel even more sad and lethargic and overwhelmed and stressed. And then because we feel like that, we're not cleaning. And it's like this crazy vicious cycle. But here's the thing. We don't have to have our house to be perfect for us to start feeling better. We just have to start taking action towards the end goal. And I'm going to show you five things that you can do right now to not only make your space look better, but to make you feel better too. Clutter doesn't just affect us because of the way it looks. It affects us by something called friction. Friction in your home is anything that gets in the way between you and the thing you want to do. So here's an example. You want to cook a healthy dinner for your family, but you come in the kitchen and it's covered in dirty dishes and you haven't taken out any meat to defrost and you're feeling overwhelmed by just everything you would have to move in order to cook. So you end up ordering a pizza or getting McDonald's again. This is an example of friction. It's it's all these little tiny things that are roadblocks in our way. Removing excess stuff is what removes friction from our home. Anytime you have to look and hunt through a drawer or a cabinet or a closet, friction, friction, friction. Anytime you have to shuffle something out of the way or pick things up before you can clean, friction, friction, friction. And decluttering reduces friction. My closet is a huge source of friction for me. Every single morning I come in here, I love it, don't get me wrong. But here's, I'm gonna give you an example. So I go to get ready and I'm like, oh, I love this shirt and I pull it out and it's wrinkly. And I didn't put it away wrinkly. It wasn't wrinkled when I put it away at all, but because it's so like squished together, every single one of the shirts that I love is wrinkled because I have too many clothes and I play this game every day. I'm like frustrated because I'm like, oh, I could wear this. Nope, it's wrinkly. Oh, I could wear this. Nope, it's wrinkly. And I end up wearing the same clothes that don't wrinkle over and over again like this, even though I don't love them. So I'm ripping off the band-aid. I'm reducing friction. I'm getting rid of clothes that I don't like so that every morning is easier and I'm actually wearing the clothes I love. You gotta give this a try. And I'm not saying it isn't hard. Oh God, it's so hard. <laughs> I don't want to, but the truth is, my kids say I look like a basic mom in this and they make fun of me and say, where's your Starbucks in your minivan? Which are two of my favorite things. I love this cardigan so much, but see how wrinkled it is? But I gotta make room for it. That's the whole thing. This too short. This, what the heck is this? Is this 1999? Why do I have this? <laughs> no, stop it. I love this so much. Is this the one with the hole in it? Yeah. And I, I take it out and I put it, I'm like, oh, too bad it has a hole. And I put it back in my closet. I put it back in my closet. You know who doesn't like country? Though Beyonce is making me rethink that. I love you, Queen Bee, but I'm not gonna like country. It's hard. This is why is this so hard? 
I love it. I love it. I love all of them. You know what? I actually really hate this, but I wear it because it doesn't wrinkle. So I'm gonna, it's going. And this I really love, but it has a stain. And this it's 1990, but I like it, but no, it's going. I do I love it? Do I love it? No. Do I love this? I loved this when I was a buck 25. Now it just looks like a sausage casing. It's a no. This, you know what? No, you're cooler than a Henley. Cast, you're too cool for a Henley. I love cardigans, so wrinkled, but it won't be. This just is too short. I love it, I do, but no. Yes, yes, you know, you know, do I, is this a, how many do you need? You know what, this one I only wear because it doesn't wrinkle, but I hate it. <laughs> Wait for it. Breathing room. Oh, you know what? You're gonna die in a hole too. You're cute, but you make me claustrophobic. I only need one turtleneck. I only need one black turtleneck. What are you, Steve Jobs? Like a boss, like a boss. Almost half. Who's the man? I'm the man. Let's do it here. Let's repeat. This is the coolest shirt I own, but I have to wear a strapless bra with it, and these girls and strapless bras do not play nice together. Basic tee, basic tee. You know what? Again, grandma! One of these has a hole. This is so wrinkled, and it's never going to not be wrinkled. Grandma! <laughs> Can I keep this grandma one? I need a couple grandma ones. I, I, this one's so stupid cute, but again, it's like off the shoulder. No, and it's just, you know, and I'm just, I'm not cool enough, man. Some things I'm too cool for, some things I'm not, it's not, it's just, and this one? No. I like this flutter shoulder. No way gonna take you from me, but you are too yellow. Whew, that was tough. That was tough. That was tough, but I'm gonna be happy tomorrow. So I got rid of a ton of stuff. I'm feeling actually really good and it's gonna feel even better tomorrow when I come in here to get ready and everything's gonna be wrinkle free. You can set up every single space in your house so that it reduces friction. It removes those roadblocks between you and all the cool things you wanna accomplish. Like if you're struggling to cook every day, meal plan meal plan every Sunday, make sure you're opening up the freezer and taking all the meat out for the week and making sure you have all the ingredients on hand, doing a quick like 10 minute tidy up of your kitchen at night so the next day you don't have any friction between you and cooking a healthy dinner. And I used to have a lot of friction when it came to cleaning the house. I would I would feel the urge. I'd see some dirt or some dust and I'd be like, I should probably clean. And then I would have to hunt for my cleaning supply and I would have to like, oh, I need a rag and then go get a rag. And where's my duster? I should probably grab a trash bag. I kind of need to tidy first. And then the urge is gone. I'm no longer cleaning because I have all these tiny little friction in between me and actually doing the task. So creating a cleaning caddy, putting all the cleaning supplies in one place so it's really easy to get to, you just pick it up and go. There's no more friction, which means you're actually cleaning the house. You can also make a declutter kit. So if you know you have to declutter, but now you have to find cardboard boxes and trash bags and like, where do you even start? Making a declutter kit for yourself, including a checklist of a bunch of things you can find to declutter, having the box filled with trash bags and clear bags, that just sets you up for success. It eliminates that roadblock and all of those little friction points which are slowing you down and stopping you from actually decluttering. You know what I need to do? I need to create a workout bag that's always packed and right at the back door or leave it in my car because after dinner, I'm always like, I should go to the gym. Where's my running shoes? Oh, I have to find workout clothes. And then I'm like, I need a towel. And I was like, I don't even know where my gym membership is. And then I'm like, I'll go tomorrow. There's no excuses if I have 
the bag packed, everything organized together and it's in a convenient place. And if you want to do it in the morning, literally charge your phone on top of your bag. So you got to get up to shut your alarm off. Might as well just grab the bag and go. Everything's ready. These are examples of limiting friction, but it really is just organization. So declutter and create systems so that you can actually achieve all the cool things that you want to get done. Besides decluttering and removing friction, there are other ways that we can change our environment to make us happier and healthier too. And one of those ways is light. So just making your space brighter and lighter. We know that light affects our mood. We're supposed to go outside and get sunlight, but indoor light has the same effect. You've probably heard of like seasonal depression, which happens because we have less light in the winter. So if you're always in your home though, and the curtains are always drawn, or you don't have enough lamps, or you have the wrong kind of light bulbs, you can get this same effect like all year long, but it's easy to change this. Literally opening up your curtains, opening up the blinds, or just changing out your light bulbs for a daylight bulb and a higher wattage can drastically like brighten your entire space, which will brighten your mood. So adding lamps, changing light bulbs, making it brighter, even painting rooms a lighter color. I'm a fan of white can bounce the light off the walls, which makes everything seem bigger, brighter, and happier, which is gonna make you feel happier too. Don't forget about the other senses too, like sounds and smells. This is crazy how much it affects you. I just read this really cool study. I'm gonna actually link it down below because you have to hear this. It proves that your immune system can hear noise. So low intensity, relaxing music actually can enhance your immune system. Like your immune system is stronger and works better. Whereas loud, high intensity, annoying noise can actually suppress your immune system, which means you can get sicker. So if your house is like mine and there's always just like irritating sounds or <laughs> sounds that might be making you sick in the background, it's okay. We can drown those out with relaxing sounds, maybe like a water fountain or listening to nature music, classical music if you want to get real fancy, or just having white noise machines. It can honestly not only make you less stressed out, but actually healthier at the same time. Let's talk about smell. This is actually really fascinating. Did you know that smell can actually trigger an immune response? So foul odors like dirty garbages, dirty dishes, maybe dirty clothes, BO, cat litter, all of those things can trigger your immune system to really rev up and become overactive because it doesn't know if this is stuff that can make you sick. So when you smell something bad, your body tries to attack, you know, get ready to attack whatever could potentially make you ill, which sounds amazing, right? Except unfortunately, an overactive immune system can actually cause a lot of problems like inflammation or make autoimmune disorders a lot worse, like Hashimoto's, which is something I have, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, the list goes on and on. So Removing stinky smells can actually make you healthier, which is really, really fascinating. So empty your garbages or wash your sheets. Make sure that you're always loading the dishwasher or getting rid of those smelly dishes can actually make you healthier. So if bad smells can make you sick, then good smells can probably make you healthier. At the very least, it's gonna make you happier. So make sure that you're cleaning with non-toxic cleaners that you actually like the smell. You can add essential oils or get one that you like the smell. You can use essential oil diffusers to add a beautiful smell to your home. But I like making a little pot. I cut up some oranges and add some cinnamon sticks to a pot of water and I turn it on the stove and just let it simmer for the afternoon. It smells amazing and it's completely natural and non-toxic. Your home affects your emotions. Your stuff like subconsciously is always sending you signals that affect your mood and your happiness and your health because if there is piles of things you need to deal with or work on all over the place, of course you're gonna feel stressed and overwhelmed. If everywhere you look, it's chaos, of course you're not gonna be happy. 
We can even go a step further. If you have things in your home that make you feel guilty, like workout equipment you should be using but you never really do, or gifts that people bought you that you don't really like, or things you haven't returned in forever, and you keep staring at them, it just makes you feel bad about yourself. But the opposite is also true. So when you look around and you see family photos of cherished memories or things you find beautiful, gifts that you actually cherish, things that trigger positive emotions in you, you're gonna feel happier and, and just, yeah, lighter overall. And this is why decluttering is so important. We have to unbury the good stuff. If you have a kitchen table that was your grandmother's that you love looking at, but it's piled under a bunch of stuff, it's gonna take away that good memory. It's taking away that good feeling and it's replacing it with a negative. So clearing it off will make you happier because every time you look at it, you're gonna feel a little joy and connection to your grandma. And this is, everything. If you have beautiful family photos but you can't see them because of all the clutter and you're distracted, decluttering will change this. Let's unbury the amazingly positive things in our home right now. We spend 90% of our time indoors and it affects us. It does. More than you could ever possibly know. We have the power though to change everything just by changing our environment. Change your home, change your life. If you're really serious about, you know, taking your house back, taking back control, making yourself healthier and happier, this video is like it came into your feed for a reason and you're watching it for a reason because right now the Take Your House Back course is back open and it's on sale and our next live all day declutter is April 27th. Usually this course, which has so many incredible step-by-step -step tutorial videos is $597, but it's only $94 until Wednesday, April 24th. I hate selling you things, but here's the honest truth. This course will change your life. It will. Not only watching the step-by-step -step tutorials, which breaks it down and makes decluttering easy and not overwhelming, but it's the community that comes with it. The Facebook group is insane. It is filled with the most positive, encouraging, incredible people who are all in the same place. On top of that, not only do we do lives in there and answer your questions and coach you, but we have these all day live declutter events where we spend eight hours with you as your clutter coach. It's Dana from A Slob Comes Clean, Dawn from The Middle Mom, and I, live with you all day, just getting stuff out. It is one of the most life-changing things you could do. And I'm gonna put the link down below and I'll pin a comment. If you haven't already, please, please join the Take Your House Back community. And if you've already done it in the past, it's only $10 to rejoin for the full year. So make sure you click that link and I hope to see you guys on our next All Day Declutter. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love spending time with you and I love hopefully motivating you to live your very best life. We'll see you guys next time. Let's talk about smell. This is actually really fascinating. Skank, nope, they don't like the word skank. Skank means a hoe, got it. Right, okay, sorry, here we go. It wasn't always wrinkly. I would steam them, and because it's so com it's com car it's compartment it's con squished, it's too tight in here. <laughs> okay, okay. Then this is the embarrassing part. I get to the stairs. Does that smell? Oh my god, it's so good. Gagging. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. The last update I gave you on Operation Cast Becomes a Firefighter was the aptitude test that I thought I failed. Guess what? I made it to the final round, which was my physical test, which was just a few days ago. I should have prepared and exercised, maybe at least lifted a weight. Nah, Cass is gonna wing it. So I show up. They put on the firefighter gear on me, and I am shocked by the weight. Then they put an oxygen tank on your back, and then you're doing these things. These 
seemingly easy things. I'm gonna start with the first mortifying thing that happened. It's pick up a charged hose, put it on your shoulder, and walk forward to the pylon like 30 feet and then come back and then set the charged hose down. Only rule, don't open the valve, don't squirt everybody, and the cars with the fire hose. I would never do that. I pick up the hose, I put it on, I grab the handles, I start charging. It is not a handle, it is a valve, which I'm now opening. That was super embarrassing. Embarrassing moment number two, I'm supposed to open a fire hydrant and I'm supposed to attach things and use tools and I'm doing so good. I think I'm amazing. And then I'm supposed to close the valve. So I close the valve on the fire hydrant, which is actually opening because righty tighty lefty loosey, I know this, but I somehow don't know this. That was embarrassing. And then I did cool things. I climbed a big ladder I, I, and I went up 50 feet and I aced this thing, hopefully I think, but then it came to the stairs challenge. In full gear with the oxygen tank, then picking up a hose on your shoulder and going up and down flights of stairs. We're wearing like a mask on top too to assimilate them and I'm, and it's fogged up and sweat's pouring and the guy's like, are you okay? Okay, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, man, I'm fine. Trying to pretend and play it cool like I'm not the most out of shape 45 year old woman who ever walked the earth. The point is, I did it. I was proud of myself. If nothing else, here's the silver lining here. I, for the first time in a long time, am really motivated to work out. That was like a, a mirror of my weakness. I know how weak I am. I knew, but now I know. So I'm joining a gym, I'm getting a personal trainer, and I am getting buff. I'll see you guys next time.